here inside. I am the fish butcher. So I'll take any of the whole product that we get in from our fishermen and make it ready to eat. We specialize in local San Diego seafood and we want to serve it in a fun, fresh way with modern as well as more traditional techniques. Our chef is really great at taking something simple and just making it pop. So being the only fish busher here and wanting to give the chef as much time as he can to monitor the rest of the restaurant, I might have one fish to cut or I might have 20, 30, up to 1,000 pounds of fish to cut in one day. My day to day is totally different. I'll walk in, see what we have on hand, what's used first, what we gotta go through now. And then from there, I might just decide today I only have 10 portions that I need to do to keep us counts. We don't wanna go too high to ensure that all of our product is fresh and we're not above what we're gonna need for the day. But sometimes if we're getting four to 600 pounds of fish in one day, if the weather's gonna be bad, a lot of times we have to be in communication with our fishermen to know how much fish we should bring in now to make sure that we still have food for later. So those days I might be cutting an opa down to loins, two tuna, a swordfish, and 100 pounds of halibut all in one day. Ironside is totally unpredictable. We might have to prepare for any situation. I came to San Diego from Chicago three years ago after graduating from Kendall College of Culinary Arts. I started working on the line and learning kind of the basics of restaurant world before I snuck into kind of a butchery apprenticeship with our past chef as well as our current chef Kyle and learned as much as I could from the chefs that I was around to really get to the core part of seafood, which I think is butchery. It's the first and the main part of getting to know the fish. That way you can see, okay, this part of the filet works great for this dish and maybe not so much for this. And that way I get to get kind of a full circle perspective. My butchery style, I would say, is kind of a hybrid of all the people who've taught me great things and just what I've learned through doing it. I've learned that if I'm comfortable with something, that's when I'm probably gonna get the best end result. If I feel uncomfortable, I'll move my body, I'll move my knife, I'll move the fish to work for me. You know, work smarter, not harder, is the saying that everybody says. It's no different for butchery. I do like to try creative things that I'll see somebody does something with a mackerel, I wanna know if I can do that with a yellowtail. You know, why, if it's small, why can't you do it with something that's big too? And I think Ironside's a great place that they totally support doing funky things, trying new approaches, and often me and the other chefs or cooks will sit around and just brainstorm and, and try new things. For me, it's just, growth. I'm still in that sponge stage. I'm still learning. I'm still developing my style. So I don't want to restrict myself. The way that I break down a yellowtail is I'll cut the head off from the very back tip where the top loin will end in a diagonal behind the fin and collar down to the belly. I'll cut it completely off before I remove the collar from the head. Then I will make a cut from the side of the fish's face where the gills are all the way down and cut through that bone in the skull, flip it over and then make the next cut on that head so that I can release the collar. Cutting on this angle will give us a real meaty collar. That way we can feature it instead of hiding it and use this meaty collar as its own dish. I kind of like the ritual of Japanese knives, keeping them sharp, and it just becomes almost a spiritual process. I think safety-wise, if your knife is wet or your hand is wet, take the time to stop and dry it, don't slip. If you are getting fatigued, take a second, have some water. I'll usually take that time to go over my counts, maybe organize something in the walk-in, come back, start again. As long as it's on ice, take your time. If I'm rushing, that's when I'm more likely to nick myself. So. Even if you're in a time crunch, remember it takes more time to stop and bandage up a cut. So slow down, take your time. It's better for you and the fish. Once you get into it, you can just zone out and you're in fish cutting mode. Hours will go by, you know, you blink and you've got a file full of perfectly wrapped fish loins and a walk-in full of portioned fish.